right. It is the last of the day. And I have used up most of the energy I have to make two videos today while at the same time getting the rest of the chores and stuff done. Oh, well, anyway, I'm on the verge of death because I'm tired as hell. But today's video is going to be about uh, how to interconnect remote sites. So let's just say that R1 here is your main ISP. So R1 is your main router. R2 is the secondary router that it hangs off of it, right? Okay, so this is basically essentially one uh, leg of your ISP right here. This connection here is, this is the internet. This represents the internet here. So now let's just say that you've got a remote site. Alexa, order sex toys. Sorry, I don't know that, but I do have a skill you might like. <laughs> it's called dog. Squeaky toy. Alexa, try it. stop. That's for all of you out there with Alexa at home. <laughs> okay, Google, order sex Nani? toys. Nani? Yeah, I just did that. That's hilarious. So anyway, let's say that R3 remote site A right here. Uh, this site here is actually just, you know, a little micro pop that you've got set up, but it's on an entirely different internet connection, but you want to tie it into your management server, right? Well, no big deal. I'll show you how to do that. Or same thing. There's another little remote leg of your network. So you've got some more pops over here and they're like remotely connected in. So there, are, let's say that this one is essentially on like AT&T. This one's on Comscope. Let's say that this one over here is on Rogers, right? Just for shits and giggles. Okay. That being said, let's bring them up. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do a simple VPN configuration and connect to your sites. And what I'm gonna do for this one, cause I am wiped, but I wanna get you guys uh, just a brief example of how this works. So I'm going to interconnect router four, which is the head end for router four and router five uh, into the network for R1. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna bring up R4 and R1. All right, so I've got these guys configured. I set up some very simple OSPF on them. If you want to see OSPF configurations and that, it's all on the Patreon channel. I do have exclusive content on there because it's a little bit higher level. All right, so we'll look at the uh, routing table here, right? You can see what's in it right here. Actually, I can get rid of this because I've got to reorganize slightly. So this is going to be the remote site right here. And this is the main site. So essentially you need a persistent VPN. So if you watch my other video on how to set up a uh, VPN for your own dial-in purposes, this will be a little bit different because your tunnel needs to have a fixed IP on both ends. So here's a few things that we need to do. First of all, this site here, we need to find out what the public IP address is. So this one here is 192.168.255.50, no problem. All right, we're gonna go to PPP because that's where all of your VPN stuff is. And I'm just gonna do this with SSTP, okay? Because I can get basic encryption going and uh, you know get it running for you. Whereas with L2TP, there's a little bit more configuration and I have yet to do the VPN videos for each of the VPNs, but we'll get there, okay? This is a crash course. So we're gonna enable this right now. And I'm gonna use the default encryption. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not gonna use the default encryption. See, I'm tired. I'm gonna use VPN. So going back to my other video, you'll understand why I'm using VPN. I've got, uh, I made a copy of default encryption and told it to use a specific IP pool, right? All right, and yes, you can do certificates on this, but uh, we're not doing that in this episode. So here we go. Apply. Okay, cool. We've got that in place. So the SSTP server's up and running, right? Now by default, when a device connects to this now, it's gonna pull an IP pool or IP address from the VPN pool. So let's create a user account that will only be used by R4 Remote B. We're gonna go R4 Remote B. It's gonna be the name of it. We're gonna put in the caller ID, which is the IP address that it's calling in from. Assuming it's static, it should be if you're doing carrier services, right? All right, profile, we'll just do default encryption here. And if you wanna keep it consistent, you can go VPN, right? But this is where we change it up. We want this to have static IPs for the tunnel. We don't want them to change. We want it to be persistent and not dynamic. So let's give it an arbitrary IP. So 172.20. Let's just use the loopback IP. Where's our IP addresses here? So 10.3.255, okay, so we'll go 172.20.3.0 and 172.20.3.1. Now, here's the other thing. If you watched my video on subnetting, you'll notice that I have themes. So this one is 10.5 over here, and uh, because we are using CG NAT over there as well, 100.64 plus 5 equals 100.69. So right now we need to add this subnet. We need to go 10. Dot five dot zero dot zero slash sixteen, and now basically this will populate a route in here 
to everything on this side of the network for management, but it won't do anything for the customer subnet, okay? And I'll show you how to do that in just a second, because when I've done it through here, it hasn't necessarily worked properly, so... Eh, you can crucify me in the comments. I haven't had a chance to troubleshoot, but here we go. So we've now created this, okay? And now this is only going to allow access, and uh, actually I should set this for SFT, SSTP. This will only allow access from this IP address to this user account, and it's going to make sure that it has this set of IPs. So remember, you can only use this username once. I'm going to make the password secret, okay? Done. Okay, so now we're going to go to active connections. I'm going to go over here now. We're going to get the IP address from here, all right? This one is 47. All right, so I'm just gonna, this is the WAN IP, by the way. Yes, you can see ETH1 WAN. Because we're working from WAN IP to WAN IP because we're connecting things across the internet, right? We're gonna go to the PPP and go to SSTP client, and we're gonna call this one R1 main sites, like so. Put the IP address we're dialing out to. Okay, and we're gonna get rid of PAP and CHAP here because we don't wanna use those, okay? Now, we need to put in the username and password. If we go back over to, your, uh, to secrets, there we go, there's our username, and if I go settings, hide passwords, I can see the password. I can copy and paste that like so, is that neat? And there's actually one other thing that I wanted to check on here. So we got SSTP here, okay. So we can get rid of those right there, right? Um, force AES, yes, perfect. Okay, cool. So now, <laughs> let's hit apply. You'll see that it's connected now. What's well, really neat, you see the active connection over here, right? Now watch, if I go to IP routes, you'll notice that this has added 10.5.0 into the routing table here now. So now this will populate this across the other routers as well. So watch this. If I go over here to uh, Winbox and I connect to router one main site, connect to Roman, which I demonstrate how to do in the Roman video. I'm gonna connect to router two over here and we're gonna look at the IP table quickly. Look at that. But now 10.5.0.0 is visible across the entire network because the OSPF session is populating that route across the network for you. So now your management devices can all intercommunicate with each other. Okay, now remember that's a double-edged sword because once that's in place, it allows your management server to be able to access everything across all your networks. But at the same time, it also bridges your control plane. So this is where we need to get into network security and discussions. Um, but at this point, this is just a very simple explanation for you guys, okay? So that's in place, but what if you also wanna make sure that your customers, and this is where you better firewall it, okay? So if you're gonna include the customer subnet here, so that it is also carried across to the other side, then you're gonna have to make sure that you've got um, the 100.69 in your routing table like this. But now there's something else you need to consider too. See this? This side of the network is 10.3. Oh, listen, my kitties are having a little opera for me. Sing to me. All right, so alternatively, another way that you can do this tunnel here, I'll show you is you can't necessarily refer to the actual tunnel name because when it goes down, it won't automatically reapply itself, which as you know from what I showed you over here on Secrets, this guy is reapplying this route every time it comes up, right? But let's just say that you wanted to include the 100.69 subnet, right? I'll add that now, but you need to point it at the IP address. Watch, 100.69.0.0 slash 16, right? But now watch, let's go over here to the active connection. And we're going to go to the other side of the tunnel here, that address there. And if we put it in here like so, you'll notice that it comes online. And now I can ping it. Right? Now, you're probably wondering why did I put the IP address and not the interface in. And that's because we want it to remain consistent. Watch. If I kill this interface, it'll go down. But you'll you see how it went blue and it came back up? That's because it knows to look for a specific IP address every time. Which goes back to why we put in a fixed IP for that user account and remember you cannot use that user account more than once because if you do it'll screw the whole thing up this is just for one site which means if you're going to add another site you better create another account for it so there we go that is how we set up our point to points uh for remote management and don't forget you still need to add your firewall entries that will actually isolate the 100 dot subnets from the 10 dot subnets so that the customer uh subnet range cannot gain access to your uh management range okay but we're going to be going through an entire security video 
at some point anyway. So this is just to show you guys how to establish a tunnel. I just want to reiterate that. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And um, thanks to all of our Patreons. And don't forget, we do have a Patreon. So if um, you want to help the channel out, you know, you can contribute just three bucks a month and that helps us out quite a bit. And uh, we also have different tiers that allow you access to exclusive content, which I'm trying to get more exclusive content on the Patreon every day. All sorts of insider things. You can vote, you can ask for specific videos, all that wonderful stuff. Plus tutorials that'll be on there that you won't find on the YouTube channel for one year. All right. So thanks for watching guys. I hope that was insightful and I am sorry I'm not too funny right now, but I am exhausted and I finally squished this video in at 11 o'clock p.m. at night and I have to work tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to go to bed after this. All right. Thanks everybody. Love you all. Have a great night.